t-shirt. So, we're talking about vehicle self-defense. The whole impetus of this class, the whole focus of this class is working under the assumption that the vehicle cannot be readily moved. Make sense? Because if we can drive away, let's drive away, right? But if we have to fight from the vehicle, there's some very particular things that we need to know how to deal with. Um, obviously, maneuvering inside the vehicle is gonna be huge because it's a different kind of environment and some of us are going to be riding alone and some of us are going to have kids. So that definitely changes how we work inside the car. Some of us have occupational concerns. If you're working in law enforcement, the vehicles, you're going to be near a vehicle when you get in a gunfight. That's almost a guarantee. You may not be in it, but you're going to be either shooting into a car, dealing with a threat in a car, or working outside of your own patrol vehicle. The, one of the biggest immediate complications you have with vehicle-based self-defense is this windshield. Why is that? What, what makes it difficult when we talk about this windshield? It's, it's, laminate. it's a laminate glass, right? And angles are going to be different based on vehicle type. So do you think the ballistics through this windshield are going to be the same, say, the ballistics through... What do you drive? Suburban. You think it's going to be the same? No, Maybe angles. close, though? You right. think the angle's about the same? But then we get into the age of the glass, the type of glass Chevy uses, uses versus Ford. So there are some consistent inconsistencies when we talk about windshield glass, but there are also some consistencies that we can count on. We know deflection is going to occur, um, but when we get into the rounds we use, we've got to figure out what's going to cause deflection, how our ram is going to perform. Now, why would we have to shoot through the windshield? Threat in front of the vehicle. Threat in front of the vehicle. If I'm in my vehicle and I'm being attacked, where is the attack going to start? I don't know. But does it make sense that it could start in front of the vehicle? So my initial shots may have to be through this glass. Where's my threat likely going to? Driver's side door, right? If he wants to make access to me, or maybe passenger side to make access to my passenger, or maybe I don't know. But most likely to least likely, I think it would most likely be possible that he's going to try to access the driver's side versus the passenger side or some other area of the vehicle. Could he jump on the hood? Mm -hmm. Just completely crazy? Maybe start beating on the window yeah. with a hammer or whatever? These things have happened, yeah. have they not? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if I can avoid shooting through the windshield, I will. If I know the threat's gonna happen, maybe I can do that last quarter turn on the vehicle so I can punch my rounds out through my, pass my, my side window. But am I necessarily gonna have the time to set that up? Not necessarily. So more than likely, I'm gonna have to track my threat wherever he's going to. Hopefully just pulling the gun and pointing it at him gets him to stop what he's doing. But again, I can't count on that. So I need to be prepared to shoot through the glass. And in order to shoot through this windshield, I need to understand some of the ballistic inconsistencies and consistencies that are gonna occur using your common self-defense ammunition. All right, so my first round out, just as a demonstration, target number two, I'm going to go ahead and go for that high thoracic head. I'm going to try to hit him in the heart. So my point of aim is going to be center of that drawn outline. We got some variants. It's high. That's weird, right? Because what you commonly hear is Sometimes people talk about, oh, well, exiting the vehicle, the rounds go low. Some people talk about, well, entering the windshield, the rounds go low. This is a pretty good demonstration of that consistent inconsistency. Now, I just fired a 124 grain gold dot. My point of aim was here. My point of impact was here. For practical self-defense, would that have been a significant issue? Does that, does, would that guy know he still got shot? Yeah. Would he be aware of the fact that I just fired at him? Yes. Yeah. But did we have a significant variance? Yes. Based yes. on distance. So on the head shot, that would have been... Yeah. See, if I'd gone for the head, I would have completely missed. Which, something to take to heart on your own personal self-defense ammo. Now me, I still trust my life to this round. This is my daily carry round. I love the 124 gold dots. Because they do well in every category. It, based on my experience. You may have a different experience based on situation, what you're shooting through, what mediums you use things like that. 
But as you can see, there is a significant difference. But that was my difference. Who here is carrying? What are you carrying? 357C. Okay. What do you? What do you? What bullet? Gold dot. Gold dot. No, 124 gold dots. Okay. 124 gold dot plus P. Oh, you got the plus P. Oh, yeah, you're gonna get the stripper dust all up in your face. Shield. Right? Just one single round. And maybe I drew out and I aggressed my threat and I fired a single round and that's the only round I hopefully had to fire. What has it done to the windshield itself? Is the windshield still integrally sound? Yes. Yeah. Would it cause any issues with operating the vehicle? No. 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 But on my sight picture, do you think that looking through, if I was trying to hit in the same place, do you think that this hole right here would cloud my sight picture? Yes, a little bit. So would I want to shift? Or do I want to stick with that slight loss in clarity in order to drill a hole that I can get clean ballistics through? Yeah, clean ballistics. That's my. That's what I'm. I strongly encourage people is when you shoot that first round, you're going to get a little bit of cloudy milk in your sight picture. Ignore it. Look through it. Focus on your threat. Focus on your front sight, and drill through that glass. So hopefully, after two or three rounds of successive fire, those rounds are passing through the glass unmolested by the glass itself. And that's a huge teaching point because sometimes people just they subconsciously want to move the gun and now they're it's affecting their accuracy every single trigger pull because they're shooting through glass every single time they fire so we want to avoid that <coughs> make sense yeah. Yeah. so take your time give me three rounds <laughs> looks like that first one was point aim point impact but then we had variants after that Oh, Jesus, dude. Well, I, I couldn't even imagine shooting. Roughly. You guys see what's happening on both those targets, right? That first round deviated, but since they're maintaining that same sight picture, their next two rounds were probably right where they were aiming. So we had a double stack stacked over there as well. So that first round deviated pretty, I mean, what do you say? I'd say on this one about three and a half, four inches. Yeah. But those second two rounds were consistent. He stacked them, he keyholed them. Pretty much the same thing on this target over here. So as long as you're maintaining that same sight picture, if the threat allows you to, because remember, if this guy starts moving, we have no choice but to track him. But if he stands there long enough to let us get three rounds and we can shoot as fast as we can mechanically shoot, as fast as we can accurately shoot, those next rounds are probably gonna go where we want them. Now, is there any way to predict where that bullet's gonna go and adjust? Not could you technically hold over if you know the vehicle you're shooting through? If you yeah. know your specific vehicle. You could, vehicle. but then you have to think about what's gained by doing that. Because I'm I'm okay with this deviation. Right. I am. Especially if I'm shooting for a high thoracic hit, if that's what he's giving me. You're going ahead, I know I'm going to hit him. I'm aiming for high thoracic. I'm trying to get him in the heart or whatever, and I'm going to deviate in the neck or maybe the face. And then my next couple rounds, if he stands there and lets me do it, are going to be in his chest. So I'm okay with that. Um, I'm a huge headshot guy at this distance. I think that's probably a desired point of aim. But in this situation, that'd be one of the times where I'm like, ah, probably shouldn't, just because I don't know if I'm going to be able to actually get it or not. Because I might throw that round, may go completely over his head that first round. Now, the second two may hit him. But that first round may be the most important. Looks like we had some downward deviation that time. I'll run an ACL. So every cop show you've probably ever seen has him shooting through this V. Now, what do you think might be a disadvantage to doing that? Bullet if you're not going to shoot through the windshield or say you punch out after a few rounds of the windshield and you open the door and you're holding it open with your foot and everything like that and you press out through the V, what might be a bad thing about that? Door's too thin. Well, we got this V, right? So we're kind of limited in movement. But do you think possibly that rounds impacting this glass could spall? So if the guy's shooting back at you and he's hitting metal and hitting glass all around your solid, rock solid shooting platform, that you're going to catch spalling in your arms. Do you think that spalling could disable you? Possibly. And what's worse than spalling could potentially, you have a round completely deflect off the glass surface and embed itself in your arm. So now it's wounded shooting drills, right? I don't like shooting through the V and we're going to demo this to see if it actually, if we get any spalling. But I tell people to stay away from shooting through the V because of that potential and because it limits your ability.
about the same. We got a it's on the top left corner. Yeah, we got some definitely up here. It's deflecting up oh. and away. So the FMJ is actually worse. Not a little bit, not much. Yeah, there's a little, there's some glass in there definitely. There's a piece of metal, a little tiny one right there. What's covered? What do you think you have? Do you, th do you think you could safely duck down behind the dash and be safe from gunfire? Maybe. If someone is shooting into the vehicle, what do you think the round's gonna do? Think it's gonna go up or down? Yeah, Let's find out. So my point of aim is gonna be center mass on that driver's seat, driver seat target. Went through my driver and, and went through my passenger. Dead center. And that second hole took a whole lot of meat with it out of the seat. Yeah. Which realistically, if that was a person, you may not have had a secondary. That's a lot of meat, a seat, and then a whole other person. So what was the deviation? Because because the way I'm looking at it, that was pretty much point very eight. Very little. Very little. Now, what factors contributed to the fact that I had very little deviation? Through the same hole. Well, I aim just the windshield is compromised because we've already shot through it a bunch of times. So that does add to it a little bit. What also may have contributed well to it is if you think about the, the angle of my shot, think about the plane of the gun against the plane of the window. Do you think they're close? They're very close. Yes, they sir. are very close. Now, if I was to crouch down, what do you think the bullet would do? You think it would go up? It'd Let's find out. Down. It'd bite down harder. So, why do you think it's doing that? That's pretty much point aim, point impact again. Oh no, I didn't do anything. Is he safe? Yep. Yeah. Probably upset. <laughs> <laughs> Scared. Shit. Yeah. He's glad he wore the brown pants. Yep. Yeah. Just some spalling. Oh, he got a lot of spalling. Mm -hmm. right? There's a reason for I heard one. Heard that. Heard that. Sure. that one impacted the glass right there. It didn't go through. I think yours stayed in the vehicle. Yep. Unless they came out the cowling. That happens every now and then. One will come out through the cowling and hit the windshield. So our guys are okay, right? Yeah, pretty holes. Yeah. Yeah, worked out nice. So look good. Is that one? Yeah, probably. <clears throat> no, I don't think that was there before, so that may have been one right there. So, interior of the cabin remains intact. Now, if the rounds had hit higher at a different angle, could they have skipped into the windshield? Mm -hmm. Are they losing a significant mm -hmm. amount of velocity hitting this hood? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the, da the danger is still there. Um, what concerns me more with skipped rounds is what we call raking and curving. And what, why I still have this guy here is we're going to skip around high off the hood and see if it hits our buddy in the V. So let's see if there's another reason maybe not to use that V. Were those two in his chest already made? Those were from... No, oh, I think we did have one deflect. Yeah, I don't think those were there before. Yeah. There was nothing in That's his chest. That's not a bullet hole. This is... That one is. Yeah. So one of those rounds, probably one of these... Yeah. Got him. <laughs> could it have been that one? Yeah, I was going to say it could have yeah, been that yeah. one. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That one that came out yeah. through the cowling. It went right there. Because that hole was not there. Yeah. So already we've got a good reason not to hang out in the V. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, there you oh, go. Yeah. Now that's a big hole. That's right, a bullet. Right, right. Wow. Yeah. That's a beautiful skip, too. I'm 10 for 10 on that. didn't even break. I'm 10 for 10 on that. Now, that's did that bullet go through him? It looked like it went through him sideways, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 sideways yeah. to me. Um, that's a bad but, thing again, if you get shot, do you really care about the, the quality of the delivery? You just know you got hit. Yeah. Probably that's not. That's actually better so, for a hit because he's going to Yeah. He's gonna bleed. So, that's can round skip, change direction, cause injury? Is this deflection? Yes. See, sometimes deflection works against you. That's bad. Because cover doesn't care about you. Deflection doesn't care about you. Concealment doesn't care about you because it works both ways. What works for you is going to work for him. But this knowledge will help you protect yourself and help you be more effective at stopping a threat because you know things like this happen. Now the windshield does one more silly thing that we'll talk about. We're going to move our guy. 
to I saw this on TV cover position number two, which is right here. And usually they're laid out across the hood using a teacup grip. Mm -hmm. And this is where they shoot from. Because where do most people get their education on firearms from? TV. TV, TV movies, right? NYPD Blue. NYPD Blue. <laughs> so we're going to leave our guy right where he is. And what I'm going to do, or what I'm going to have one of you guys do, is you're going to engage him directly across the windshield. What I would like you to do is try to hit him in the pelvis. Let's just say that's your point of aim. Got it. <clears throat> No. Nope. Yep, that's one. You can hear it. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like Rice Krispies. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks oh, like we got one there, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that was this one. So where do you think those rounds went? In the door or dash, right? Oh, yeah, In the door or dash, or they deflected right there. out into the berm. Yeah, one of them deflected out into the wind side window. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. Little, yeah. That's what that. I think that's the stuff we're not supposed to breathe. Yeah, yeah that's what it I was like. They went in the dash, too. See in the dash. <laughs> so, crazy. do we have a lot of concerns with deflection when it comes to this glass? Yeah. Now, just looking at all the data so far, and hopefully nobody's drinking from the fire hose on this, but all the data we've looked at with windshield glass right now, have you kind of maybe changed the way you thought about some things? Yeah. Are you looking at things a little bit differently? Maybe thinking about, okay, well, maybe what I thought would work wouldn't work in this situation, or maybe what I thought would work in that situation wouldn't work. Um, did anybody come here with no preconceived notions about what bullets do on glass? And it, has anybody's mind been completely changed? Oh, yeah, you know? mine definitely. Because everything they taught us, like I said, it was six inches above for outside and six inches below from inside. And the number one rule of windshield glass is everything is going to be consistently yeah. inconsistent based on body type, angle of delivery. The windshield angle is going to be the windshield angle, but the angle you shoot into it or out of it from can significantly alter. Um, yeah, just from here to here. Is yeah. a huge. So as you guys can see, um, I filmed that during a class, uh, but I felt like that was a good amount of data because we had a bunch of different shooters, a bunch of different ammunition. So what you've seen is how the round potentially can deviate through the windshield. All windshields are going to be different. All vehicle types are going to be different. Um, even the age of the glass, a newer vehicle versus an older vehicle, even in the same body style, can affect round deviation. That's something we definitely have to take into account when we're thinking about having to press out and, and engage a threat through the windshield. Now, obviously, if we don't have to shoot through the windshield, we couldn't because of that deviation could affect our ability to protect ourselves or to shoot accurately. So when you're thinking about your own personal protection, your own plan from if you have to unfortunately fight from the vehicle, just remember that windshield is going to create issues that you have to encounter, you're going to have to deal with, you're going to have to fight through. Um, I, I encourage everyone, especially those of you that drive a lot, uh, find a reputable instructor, take a vehicle class, especially a class that lets you get ballistic data during shooting, lets you do these things, that lets you um, lets you really experience how the round performs, how your gun performs, how your equipment's going to work inside and around the vehicle, and especially shooting through that windshield. Uh, obviously, I'd prefer you to come to one of my classes, but there's a lot of great instructors out there teaching this level of instruction on the vehicles. Um, since you spend so much time in your, your car, just like you do as a pedestrian or in your home, it's one of those environments that you need to know how to fight from it or you need to understand those basics uh, to really help you be as efficient as possible in your own self-defense planning. I'm Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.